Hello, Hirita. Thank you for this welcome. And everyone, nice to see you here. Uh, it's almost a month since we had a session, but I've been coming on and off, and I've seen all of your uh, excited and pleasant faces. So it's good to be connecting once again today. Today is a very auspicious day because it's the beginning of a full moon. Tomorrow is really the full moon, 31st, and it is a blue moon. It's an unusual thing because very rarely do we get two full moons in a month. Usually there are 12 full moons in a year, one per month. But this month we're getting two. And this uh, full moon is called a blue moon for some reason. And it is also auspicious because this week is my birthday. So I was born on a full moon day. So if I'm crazy, it is not my fault. It is a full moon. <laughs> Okay, so can you hear me? Can everyone hear me? Just give me a thumbs up so I can see. Okay, thank you. Okay, we're going to miss Shamin, but yoga is very important before any session. So I will do a little yoga. It won't be as good as Shamin, but we'll be doing a little one or two asanas or postures, which are good, and a little bit of pranayama, which is breathing. So if everyone is ready, you, you can do chair yoga, so if you you have to sit, you can sit. If you want to stand, you can stand. It is your choice. Unfortunately, I have to sit because I, this, I'm in a very, very cramped quarters here. So everyone, just relax and raise your arms. You know, raise your arms, both your arms above your head. Okay, wonderful. Now put your left arm down, your left arm, okay? It'll, it's the opposite picture for you when you look at me, but put your left arm down, put your right arm up, and keep your body straight like a pillar. And just move your arm to, to the left. Move your right arm to the left. Move it as far as you can, and try to keep, don't, don't move your body, don't turn your body. Keep your body straight, and just move your hand. Your body should be straight, your head should be straight as possible. Your neck and, and trunk and stomach should be straight. Yes, that's right. Keep it straight. Just twist your body so that this area around the chest is open. Around the area, it opens up that stomach area. And try to keep your right hip down. Push it down and your right arm up. So you're extending the side, but don't turn your body. If you turn your body, you don't get that exercise. Just open up your chest side on the right and the stomach okay keep it that way for a second or two and then lower your right hand now lift your left hand and do the same thing don't turn your body just extend your hand as far as possible and stretch your left side stretch your chest bone and your stomach so that the that gets an extension on that side okay then bring it down so that's it for the for the top body exercises let's do one or two leg exercises if you're sitting down just raise your right knee up your right knee raise it up and then raise it down do that couple of times and then your left knee raise it up and raise it down raise it up and raise it down and lower it down sorry okay one more thing if you can stand this would be good if you can't no problem hold on to the desk and raise your your right leg so you're standing on one leg but you're holding on to the desk so you're giving your one leg the left leg some exercise and your right leg is now raised move it around like i'm showing you with my hand move your leg right leg around a little bit move it if your foot move the foot a little bit so the foot gets some exercise the ankle gets some exercise okay now put your right leg down make sure you're stable hold hold on to something your table or something and raise your left leg and do the same thing, move the left leg around, move the ankle around so that it gets some circulation. It gets some exercise. And then you can put 
that left leg down and sit now you can go back and sit down so that will be uh, all our exercise all our asanas for today now let's do some pranayama some breathing breathing is very very important and we'll talk about it later in the session the importance of breathing so take a deep slow breath and count whatever number you want four or five and breathe out the same number but make sure when you're breathing in you breathe till your stomach is full breathe right deep down in your stomach so i'll try and count but you have your own count so i'm breathing in one two three four breathe out one two three four now you do it about five times yourself count any number but do it very very slowly deep breaths make sure your in breath goes re deep down in your stomach your stomach should actually feel like it's open opening up because the lungs most of the air is at the bottom part of our lungs so that's twice do it another two or three times very very slowly Okay, so now that we've done that, let us uh, let's go to our regular program that we would have. This is, Shamin would have done a much better job than this, but this is just yoga is always good, even for for sound healing. Whenever I do a sound healing session with my individually with one on one person or with a group, we do a little bit of asanas for the body, so you limber up, so circulation improves, and a little bit of breathing. Breath is very, very, breath is life, breath is energy. Okay, so the agenda for today is going to be slightly different uh, from what we've had so far. And it's not because Shamin is not here, I had planned on this earlier. Because all these sessions that I've had so far, the sound bath ends up being very, about 10 minutes or 15 minutes, very short. A sound bath should be, really be minimum 25 minutes 20 minutes to 30 minutes and here they have sound bath studios the sessions are usually 45 minutes to one hour but today we'll just do 25 minutes if it works out we can extend it in future so that's the main change and the agenda for today there'll be a small talk on sound healing and I know you're all educated intelligent people you're going to ask the question why why sound healing What's the purpose? What's the benefit to it? So we'll talk about the theory. I like to talk about theory. I know you'll have theory questions on the benefits of sound. So we'll talk about that for about five minutes. Then I've got a video by a doctor. He is an American doctor, but he studied Ayurveda and sound and stuff like that here in India. He's very popular. Lots of uh, Indians, Americans go to him. So we'll have a short video on the benefits of breathing, vibration, sound, we'll have that. Then we're going to do some chanting. We've done chanting every time. You know, that's a very important thing. We'll do some chanting. It's good for the throat. It's good for our brain. It's good for our body. So we'll do some chanting. Everyone should join. Okay. If there's time, we'll do some laughter. We've done this once before. We'll do some laughter because laughter yoga is very good. It's good for your stomach. Good for your health, good for your attitude. At this time, we'll do laughter yoga. And then for the last 20, 25 minutes, we'll do a sound bath, a complete sound bath. Okay. So a little on... One second, let me just check this here. A little on the, the value of, of this thing, sound healing. Now let's talk about customs. You know, across the world, there are different customs. People like dress. In India, Pakistan, this general subcontinent, people wear like saris generally, or salwar kameez, or dhotis. But if you go to 
Burma, they wear a thing called sarong, which is different. In China, they wear different, both men and women, wear different types of uh, dresses in different parts of, that, of China. Tibet also is a different type of a dress. If you go to the West, America and Europe, generally the skirt and a blouse or a pant. Some places, like in very cold countries, Eskimos, they have a different dress. And in South America, a country called Peru, the women wear five layers of clothes, very, very colorful, skirt and blouse. So dress is different in different regions of the world. Food is different. Some people are vegetarian, some people eat only rice, some people eat only non-veg because they can't get vegetarian, they eat only animal food. So food habits are different in different places. Then uh, marriage customs are different. Family practices are different. So in all these different regions there are different customs. But one thing is common across all of them, especially if you go to the more native places, you know, the villages or the places which are not yet like industrialized or big cities. You go to these native places, Australia, Africa, some places in India too. One thing is common in all of them, and that is chanting. They'll always sing. They'll always chant, they'll always hum. And even in the industrial countries, like in the big cities in Bombay, where religions exist, in all the religions, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Zoroastrianism, which, whichever religion you look at, they have some level of chanting. There's always chanting. They have rituals. The rituals are different in each of the religion, but what is common universally in all the religions is chanting. So there's a value to it. But that got lost in the last like 100 years or so with industrialization. People do less and less singing, less and less chanting. Mothers sometimes when they have a baby, they'll just sing to their baby. You know, they rock their baby, they may sing. But other than that, we have lost that art of chanting. And that's because of Partly because of industrialization, partly because people don't have time for that, partly because there is music, records, they just press a button, listen, <laughs> listen to the tape recorder, listen to the TV or something like that. So we have lost that valuable art of chanting. So there's a situation recently, a couple of years ago in Switzerland. They had a monastery there, and it was mainly males, not females, because you have monasteries with nuns also, female nuns. These were males. And the head, the abbot, the head of that monastery, he found all these people were getting sick, all the, and they, different type of sickness. It wasn't like a virus or a plague or anything. Some would get headaches, some would feel tired, some would just not have any energy. So doctors couldn't help him. So he called a psychologist and psychologist started to study it and he found what did he change recently? What had changed is they stopped chanting. They used to chant for a couple hours every day, but something happened to that chapel. So they stopped it. So what this guy said, let's find another place for them to get together every day and start chanting. Within a couple of months, all of them came back to good health because they were chanting it did good to their health. So it's very important to chant, to sing, to hum, to laugh. Okay? Now that we've talked about that, I would like to show you a short video. Let me just see how I can do this. One second, bear with me. This is Dr. John Dulliard. So we feel everything through our heart, okay? So those impressions are felt, and I think we all would agree to that. We all had hurt feelings before. Those hurt feelings, uh, or unfortunately sometimes traumatic events, are carried to our brain um, through what's called pranavata, prana move. So it's the movement that carries it. So everything is recorded. So we, so, you know, if you were a caveman, uh, wherever, millions of years ago, whatever, and you went into a cave and a lion came out and chased you for, you know, a couple hours, 
you would remember never to go back into that cave. You could be 85 years old and you would go to that cave and go, I know not to go into that cave. We remember. We send, we create molecules of emotion that Candace Hurt talked about in her book, Molecules of Emotion. But Ayurveda talked about it as mental ama. And those are emotional molecules that we store in our bodies to remotely make us think and do the same dumb stuff again and again and again, but also to protect us from, you know, being hurt again. So we feel it in sadhaka pitta, we carry it to our brain through pranavata, and it's stored in the brain through what's called tarpaka kapha. Tarpaka kapha means to, tarpaka means to record. It's where it's all recorded. And it's recorded in the white matter of your brain. And the white matter of the brain is where the myelin sheaths are. The myelin sheaths are a fatty layer of, uh, of um, fat that protects like insulation on a wire. You can think of it, of it like that way, but in the body it's fatty and it's very impressionable and very soft. So those, those, the pranavata literally writes those impressions from sadhaka in the tarpaka kapha. And it records that. So we never go into that cave again. We never have that traumatic experience again. And it's there in a vibrationally written sense into the white matter of our brain. So then you're like, whoa, and these impressions can come from lifetimes ago. I mean, there's good studies that show that 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 droughts and trauma and um, and uh, starvation that happened up to three generations ago can affect how we think and what we do and how we eat and how we how we how we live in a health sense you know, three generations later, and I really call them some scars. So those are also impressions that are built into our white matter of our brain. So the whole point of Ayurveda is to get rid of those. Um, that white matter that holds that traumatic impression from that cave experience that I had, um, how can I actually take that white matter and get rid of that impression? Well, the white matter is very fatty and it's very, very susceptible to what's called neuroplasticity. And there's studies now that show that chanting and vibration therapies can literally change your neuroplasticity and evolutionarily speaking, supported restoration of the brain and different organs of the body that may have been affected by ongo ongoing traumatic, traumatic, traumatic events in your life. So I was going like, wait a minute. So <clears throat> we can, so think about your brain. This is just like an analogy, right, or a metaphor. You take a, 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 a little sand, like a little, like a tray of sand, and you write some letters in it. And then I shake that sand, and all of a sudden, those impressions are gone. Okay. In a similar way, vibration therapies, which can be meditation, yoga, breathing, and chanting, have been shown to have powerful impacts that increase what's called you know, alpha brainwave coherence, data, I'm sorry, delta brainwave activity, which is literally linked to neuroplasticity and restoration of organs, as well as gamma activity in the brain. And gamma is linked to like heightened spiritual experience and heightened senses of, of awareness. So, so, so all these Ayurvedic techniques, like one of them, like the Brahmari exercise, right? The breathing exercise that you do and you hum like a bee. And when you hum mm, like a bee, it creates a vibration in your head. And the whole point was to create sort of a vibration between your head and heart and create this resonance kind of effect to heighten levels of awareness. But what's really happening at a fundamental level is you're creating this vibration that's kind of shaking the white matter and taking that fatty layer and sort of changing the structure, the neuroplasticity and restoring normal function and letting go of some of these old emotional traumas. That's incredible. Okay, so I hope he was clear. What happens is when we have any, most of our sicknesses because something in our mind affected our brain and that is recorded in the brain itself. And we can take it out uh, through meditation, through yoga, through sound healing, through prayer. Prayers also work and they say it's miracles, but it actually affects the brain and, and controls our health. Or we can go to the Western doctors and take medicines, but those do not really solve the internal problem. They just fix the symptoms. 
So when you do yoga, meditation, and some people call it contemplation, usually in Christianity it's called contemplation, it's the same thing. When you do these type of practices, we clear those memories that are hidden deep down in our brain, we clear them and get rid of them. So that's a very important point he was trying to make, and there's a lot of research that proves that, and people are now doing those things more and more. It's starting to catch in India too, but it's very popular in the West and in America. So we're going to do a little bit of chanting, okay? We've done this before, the word Om, okay? It's, it really is not a Hindu thing. It, is, uh, it came from Egypt. It came from Egypt before there was a Hindu religion, Christian religion, Muslim religion. From Egypt, it came to India and they called it Om, Ayum. Then it went to the Middle East, it called, became Amin. It went to Rome and became Amen. So you can say Amen, you can say Om, you can say whatever you want, but we'll sing this like we've done it before. And I'll try and sing it. Don't worry about my voice, it's not very good. And don't worry about the tune, it's not important. The important is to sing, because when you sing, it affects this vagus nerve that goes through the whole body and stimulates the whole body, stimulates the brain, loosens up all those negative patterns in the brain, okay? So I'll sing it once, then after that all of us as a group will sing it maybe three or four times. And I hope when you go home, when I mean go home, when during the day you sing, okay? Sing, sing anything, preferably humming, because humming is better than singing. When you sing, you hear the words, I love you, you love, and then you think about something else. So just hum. Humming is good because it's, it, it gives a toning effect. <coughs> so we are going to do Om. I'll do it with that song, Sydney Portia song called Amen. And it goes like this. Amen. 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 I, want, I would like all of you all to unmute yourselves so we can all sing as a group, okay? I want to hear everyone singing. Everyone should sing. And if you're, someone is going to, in your house, is going to laugh at you, say, let them laugh, let them, ignore them. You'll be having good health and they won't. So, let's sing. Okay, one, two, three. We'll do it five times. Second time. Amen. Third time, Amen. 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 Louder, everybody. Amen. Amen. Last time, Amen. Thank you very much. Okay, you've done yourselves a lot of good. You, it's, it's helped your brain waves. It's making you more relaxed. We don't have time for laughter, but next time we'll do some laughter too. Laughter is very good. So if you would please mute yourself. And now we are going to have at least a 25 minutes, maybe longer, sound bath. Here in America, they have studios where people go and they, even now, because, because of social distancing, they cannot have like 20, 30 people. They have 10 people in the studio room and somebody plays the, uh, the bowls for about half an hour. People pay for that. And they're still quite very popular here in America. So we'll do at least a 20 minute. We cannot do a full half an hour session. Okay. And the focus on this sound bath is going to be immunity. Okay physical immunity and spiritual immunity for the mind. And I will give a small guidance as we go through. I would suggest you close your eyes. If you are, can find a place where you can lie down, that would be good. If you can't lie down, you're sitting down, you can just sit down, sit in a relaxed position. And I would like you to take a deep, 
slow breath like one two three four up to six four to six counts slow in breath slow out breath that slowness there's a lot of studies to do slow in breath slow out breath very good for your health if you do that regularly you live longer and you live healthier not just longer you live longer and healthier so practice that during this session okay so everybody please relax and let me know if you can hear can you hear the bowls okay so i've got five bowls here i'll focus on the bowls these are the bowls i wonder if you can see them here yeah, right here these are the bowls okay and uh, if you close your eyes that would be good if you don't close your eyes that's okay as you relax you might find yourself going to sleep that is a good thing the the closer you are to sleep the more deep sleep is when when we really have healing happening in our body that is why sleep is so important so when we start sleeping initially it's alpha a beta state then alpha then delta theta and then delta delta is very very deep sleep that's when healing happens so it could happen to you in this session so some level of healing of some old trauma some old hurt that is now expressing itself as some chronic disease that thing will go out from your memory okay so let's if you take a deep breath relax sit in a calm position and i will give you some guidance on some physical immunity points and some spiritual immunity points
white cells, red cells, stem cells, and the lymph drainage clearing system. Spiritual immunity. If our spirit, we have to make our spirit strong, and the first thing is love. We got to have love in our hearts. Right to your tummy and slow, deep out breath. 
through your whole body and going through your brain and releasing some old hurts or old unhappy thoughts, unhappy memories that are causing some kind of physical sickness. first time 
since we've started these sessions, we've had almost a 25 minute sound bath. It's very good. I hope you'll enjoyed it. And as a talk, you know, that, that gentleman, the doctor who talked about, he says, you can, all problems in our body start because of some emotional disturbance. Then because of that emotional disturbance, it's written in the brain. It's actually written down in, in some way in the brain. But that can be removed through meditation, through prayer, through chanting, through vibrations. So you, do, you don't have to depend on these sound bowls. You can do it yourself through chanting, through prayer, and through, through singing, through humming, and laughter. Just laugh and be happy. Those things all help. So we have, I think, a minute or two. If there's anyone would like to ask a question, just unmute yourself and please ask me any questions. Uh, please unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. If you want to make any comments about this this thing, it is it's getting very popular. In America, there are a lot of sound baths and in, in Europe too, you know, they're realizing that, that just the, Ameri the Western medicine is not enough. The Western medicine only addresses the symptom, the pain, and they give you something for the pain, but it is caused deep down in our emotional and our mind and in our spiritual system. So when we cure that, we actually cure the, the disease. So I think we we are about a full hour. It's almost uh, what six o'clock your time. It's, it's about seven thirty a.m. here or eight thirty a.m. in America. And I thank you. We have uh, an international audience. My nephew in, from Portugal is attending this one here, and there are I, expecting another friend of mine from America to be here. I don't see him. So I hope you all had a good session, and. <laughs> Hirata, is she here? She's gone. Okay. Yeah, Lawrence, we had a very international session. We had uh, one host from Singapore, one host from you were there from the US. Uh, we had a person joining in from Dubai. Uh, it's been an interesting day today. Oh, very good. Yes. That's because it's full moon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much, Lawrence, for this lovely, lovely, relaxing session. A great way to actually bring down the week. Uh, everybody just wanted to re remind you of two things. Tomorrow we have Dr. Prem at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, an interesting session on disabling conditions uh, for seniors. And uh, the second thing we have uh, is uh, uh, we uh, uh, just to remind everybody that this session, as well as all the other sessions by uh, Lawrence, as well as Dr. Prem and many other of our uh, people who have been uh, guests here, have been recorded and put on my website. If you can have a look at the website to redo this. If you want to do this session again, by the end of the day, this session will again be online. Uh, mm -hmm. You can again watch it, listen to part of it, listen to the entire thing. Um, so please do use these resources. They're available online for everybody. Uh, please feel free. Uh, having said that, thank you very much and we will see you either tomorrow or on Monday. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you very much.